500 sub postmasters wrongly suspected, completely innocent people of, of, or accused of taking money by the post office or to get an interim payment of compensation worth about £40,000. To be brutally honest, I don't think they should, I think they should get about £400,000 because, I mean, the sub postmasters often in villages or towns, uh, rural parts of the country, they're really pillars of the community. They're people who help people with their pensions, with all sorts of postal services. They're really valuable service and they were absolutely hammered by this uh, scandal. Let's talk to one of them. Um, his name is Tim Brentall. He's a former sub-postmaster convicted of fraud, um, still waiting for compensation. Obviously, he didn't do it. Um, Tim, I want to hear your story, but first of all, I just want to say I'm so sorry for you because you have been just dealt with so badly by the system. And I just think, I, I've, I've read your story. I want you to tell us now, but you, you've been through hell, Tim, and it must have been horrendous. And I just have so much sympathy for you. And thank you for talking to us today. Oh, thank, thank you so much. It, it's been a very um, long uh, 11 years since I was convicted in, in 2010. And, and finally, we now seem to be making steps in the right direction. So what happened with you? Because you, you ran this branch, branch in Pem Pembrokeshire for four years. You, you were told you'd been charged with theft for £22,000 and then you were prosecuted for false accounting despite paying the money back and despite not stealing it in the first place. I mean, it must have just felt as if you were living in some awful sort of nightmare. Yeah, it felt like a complete sort of Orwellian nightmare. Um, yeah, as you said, I ran the post office successfully for uh, four years until I was audited and there was this alleged £22,500 shortfall um, and I was told that I either pay that money back or I'll be prosecuted for theft and go to prison. So from my savings and, and family savings, we paid the money back. And, and within a, a week or two of paying that money back, they then prosecuted me for false accounting, which uh, I was determined to fight. But my barrister at the time advised me that uh, me as uh, one person on my own standing up against the post office or you know the crown um a jury would be very inclined to uh, to believe to believe the crown and i'd go to prison so they convinced me to plead guilty to it and, and the problem was despite that one example which was horrendous and completely unacceptable and wrong and you're paying back money you'd never stolen in the first place you weren't one person on your own were you there were there were many many people in your position this, this is the most horrible part about it. I mean, they, they told me verbatim that I'm the only person that's having problems with the system. And that when was I raised nonsense. The, that was absolutely untrue. Yeah, I mean, they, at that point, they were prosecuting between 50 and 60 postmasters a year. Unbelievable. You're now going to get um, something like £40,000. Uh, I wonder, is that, I mean, I don't think that's enough, quite frankly. I, I, I just think, I mean, in terms of what you've been through, in terms of lost earnings, in terms of reputation and so on, I mean, we've only got a short time here, but is there really anything that can make up for this? No, I mean, uh, it, it, it's a welcome start for, for, for all of us in the group that we're all now being compensated because uh, members of the group that didn't have a conviction to be overturned were totally left out in the cold until until last week's uh, uh, announcement. But um, it'll come before the inquiry next week, the, the Sir Wynne Williams Post Office inquiry, that Post Office uh, were well aware at board level of these problems with the computer system back as far as 2013, uh, and yet they failed to disclose it to any of us. And that, that's the part that hits the most, is that we've we fought them for a decade when they knew full well what they'd done, and instead of admitting it and sorting it out, they, they, they chose to cover it up. How, how, how are you? How is your family? How, how, how have you been dealing with all of this? Because this has just been horrendous. Well, it's been um, a very, very long decade. Um, you know, my, my marriage broke down. Um, there were trust issues between me and my family at the beginning until we found out that there were more, many more people involved with this. You know, it, it's, it's the post office or the Crown's word against mine, and many people in the village, in the community, wouldn't believe that um, it wasn't my problem. Do you still live there? I do, yes. Um, unfortunately, um, I decided to keep the retail shop going um, because I felt a responsibility because it's a very, very rural community yeah. I live in in West Wales. And, and, that, and, um, that, and that actually, I'm sorry, we've got to go, but that actually speaks to the fact that people needed that post office. They needed that village shop and they needed you to yes, be there. Yeah, yeah. Tim, you know, we're, we're miles. Thank you, thank you. Tim, Tim we've got to go. I apologise um, for the, the timing. Thank you so much. Tim Brentall speaking us there about...